Okay, welcome to, um, to the Avalon presentation. Um, I hope you guys have uh, coffee, because uh, we're talking about KYC and compliance. Uh, inherently super boring. If you don't have coffee, you should potentially have alcohol, but uh, leave it at that. So my name is Anas, I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO, um, and I'm partly guilty for the pain you may be experiencing. Uh, I've been working in banking for 21 years, uh, seven of those uh, as uh, head of compliance and op risk in uh, large Nordic banks. So now I move to the other side. We're trying to solve the pain uh, and do the best we can with, uh, with that part. So um, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, the why of compliance uh, and then actually also around, uh, around how we see the developments in it. And then we're going to do a live demo, uh, show a little bit around the platform, but just spend a little bit of time uh, around uh, the why. Um, so in general, uh, people focus a lot on the pain point and uh, everyone you know, hates uh, KYC. Um, uh, and instead of thinking about KYC like a financial crime prevention thing, we need to think, it about, uh, think about it as what is the underlying crime uh, behind uh, the, all the processes we build. So when you have money flows, uh, money laundering in general, there's an underlying crime behind that flow. Uh, and those crimes are like the most horrific crimes, nothing that we want to be associated with. It's drug trafficking, human trafficking, um, uh, illegal arms trading, uh, organized crime, uh, for terrorist financing, it's terrorist attacks that happens uh, every uh, week around the globe. We just don't read about it in the newspapers always. So that is actually the underlying thing we're trying to fight. So when you're sitting there with a KYC request from a bank and you're super frustrated, maybe that can help just motivate it a little bit, right? I'm really trying to build up momentum, okay? Um, so. When we talk about financial crime uh, in general, uh, and you can hear different answers to this, what, what is it actually that it covers? Uh, and, and in Avalon, we define it as five areas uh, we're trying to combat. So obviously you have, uh, have uh, counter-terrorist financing. Here we're focused on uh, where, where are the money going to, not so much where the money is coming from. Uh, very much smaller amounts, but a super critical uh, part of fighting financial crime. Then we have uh, anti-money laundering, which is the one everyone knows, but it's just one part of it. Here we focus on where the money coming from. So are they coming from uh, illegal uh, activities, uh, illicit activities? We have anti-bribery and corruption, obviously where people of power, very often public power, misuse that for their own benefit instead of actually helping society in the positions they're entrusted. Super important to detect that uh, and uh, combat that. We have financial sanctions, very, very apropos what's going on, uh, the war in Ukraine with Russia, Belarus sanctions. So this is where the Western world goes together and say, hey, this is not okay, we want to punish them. We do that via limiting their trading op uh, opportunities. Super complex uh, place to be, but also very, very critical, especially also for corporates in terms of who are their customers, who are their vendors, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, we have tax evasion. And now we have a picture of, uh, I don't know, what is that, an evil uh, uh, law firm uh, making big schemes for tax evasion, I don't know. But it's also really the small stuff. People that don't pay their taxes and thereby we don't have the money for schools, healthcare, roads, whatever it is. So obviously that also has to be combated. Just to say, all of it, this is what the banks are obligated to prevent. And that's why corporates get impacted as well. Because you are obligated to be transparent to help this fight. All right? So this is the why. Okay. Now, um, why is it then so uh, frustrating? So what is the complication? So the complication is one that we have increasing amount of KYC requests. Banks mature more and more. They ramp up actually the, the frequency of it, but actually also jumping down to number three here, that it's not just banks requesting KYC. So you have your law firm that needs to request, you have your law, uh, sorry, the, the bookkeeper, you have the auditor, and then your customers see you as vendors, and your vendors see you as, as customers, so everyone is performing due diligence on each other. So just take a real estate fund. Typically, they would uh, perform due diligence on their tenants. Um, they would perform due diligence on anyone they buy a building from, sell a building to, construction companies. Well, investors, you get the point, right? So this is just getting worse. Um, the complexity per request is also getting worse. Now we're seeing questionnaires from banks going now above 113 questions. That's 17 pages in a PDF. That's like pulling the life out of a person slowly, right? So obviously frustration is building, right? And then there's no standardization. And everyone has been talking about standardization. Can't you guys just agree what to ask for, right? 
but it's not going to come, if you ask me, because this is not a legal discipline where you just check the box, I asked about this, I asked about this, I asked about this. No, it's a, it's, it's a risk discipline where it's like, okay, I need to ask you the number of questions in order to be satisfied with the risk of you as a customer, right? So that's why standardization is very far away. And then also, even if you would standardize the global banks of the world, well then, what about the law firms? They shouldn't ask so many questions as the banks, right? So this is really about uh, what is the data that I need to share with my counterparties in order to be transparent. So why is this a problem for corporates? Well, um, very often we see these very manual uh, processes out there. You got your email, you got your Excel sheet, you got your SharePoint, HDrive, that's about it, right? PowerPoint maybe. So, so uh, this, this drives just repetitive processes. The data that we see being shared is actually low quality. Not on purpose, but if you for the seventh time this month have to reply, what is my business model? you tend to start to write stuff like Mickey Mouse or I don't know, or whatever it is, right? So the quality of the data is not very high, which again is impacting the banks, which again is impacting our ability to fight in society a financial crime in general, right? So no real software tools and digitization, why is that? Well, I think many of, of, uh, of the tech providers and also the startups, they, came, they went to the banks because they realized there are billions of, uh, of money being spent here, so let help the bank uh, actually collect the KYC. But the bank started with the consumers instead of actually saying, okay, what about the corporates? Because, well, the corporates, yeah, the bank would say, well, the other banks also suck, so why, you know, it's just live with it kind of thing, right? Um, internal collaboration, super important. Very often, Treasury don't sit with all the documents and the data. They have to ask legal, they have to ask uh, tax, they have to ask compliance. So how do we actually help the corporate collaborate internally around uh, creating this data? Uh, and then, well, insecure sharing, it is crazy in terms of what documents and data points are being shared through insecure emails. And you're forced to do it if that's the way the bank is requesting it from you, right? So how do we actually enhance GDPR privacy on passports, proof of address, tax returns, whatever it may be? Yes, and obviously it's a costly operation. And that's not so much, okay, how many people can I save in my treasury department or, you know, just in general. It's more about you have very senior people sitting and doing not super interesting work, right? So let's face it, no one loves KYC. Me, Maria, the others from the team, but the rest is like, okay, can you get it off my table? I think everyone understands it, it's important, but no one really loves it, right? Okay, enough slides. Look here, I wanna quickly uh, show you uh, how is it then that we uh, try to solve this in Avalon. This is the platform in production that our customers are using. It's a demo tenant, so I can show you around, obviously. You should think about the solution as uh, your uh, own truth. This is where you have all your data. You decide what you share with the banks and whoever is requesting it so you can respond, what we call KYC response. You can actually also collect if you have a need to collect from customers or vendors or uh, investors. And you have this in one database. Um, so in the data structure, you have obviously all your legal entities. Now this is a list of uh, 23 legal entities. This is low complexity for us. It's built for, uh, we have customers with more than 1100 legal entities. So I think the good news is that there are people out there in worse pain than you, but I think that's the only good news for today, right? So obviously you can render the uh, legal entity structure uh, and thereby share this with the banks readily based on the data. And that includes also, okay, who are, who are the ultimate beneficial owners in this structure? You can zoom out, go in on the North American part, zoom in again, say, okay, I wanna look at this. This means it can be used at the central uh, treasury level, it can use decentral in one of your regions uh, for them to, uh, to, uh, to have the data. Again, here you show uh, the legal entity structure uh, all the way up, all the way down, because that's obviously what the banks are looking for in the end, who are uh, in control of the company, right? Because a company doesn't drive itself, someone is controlling it, right? So this means looking at it, you can see uh, ownership levels, both in terms, of, um, in terms of equity and voting rights, if you have more complex structures. And this also means that you can always see, well, who is actually the ultimate beneficial owner at any point in time in your uh, structure, right? Then, of course, you have all the other data points that banks would ask for. So this is what we know. In order to go through a decent KYC, you have to be able to have these data points. That also includes tax for, you know, FATCA CRS purposes. Um, it also includes uh, the company offices. So this is a super low complexity problem, but high frustration. So 
Okay, do I want to ask my chairman of the board of the passport uh, or the utility bill one more time? Nobody likes that, right? So we built a separate interface for these gentlemen and uh, ladies as well. So here you can see for this legal entity who has which roles. And we can dive down on Ehrlich, who's the CFO. And then you have all his data here readily available to be shared. Ehrlich has his own entrance via phone or laptop, can give this information and also give, you, give consent so that you can share that onwards to third parties. This also includes obviously uh, you know, utility bills where there's uh, expiration notice on so that you can get help with renewing this and also the CFO gets notification when it renews. And that's in general for the data points and the documents in there to get help from digitization or the platform. When do I need to do something to keep this data updated? Now going quickly back to the company side of it, Obviously, you have uh, the documents for the company, uh, any type of legal documents that you want to upload, uh, and you can upload that the user, you can request it from a colleague in the team, so to drive uh, the, uh, the collaboration. And finally, you have the questionnaires. This is the worst part of it, because this is where the banks really divert in terms of what they ask for. So here you have a foundational layer of questions and answers. So you start by, by filling this out uh, and you know the drill, what's my business model, what's my source of wealth, source of funds, suppliers, customers. And you can reuse that answer again and again from bank to bank or legal entity to legal entity, right? Um, once you've done that, you're then actually ready to share with banks. Now, we haven't integrated deeply with banks because often you get this uh, from a bank over email. So you simply, you can go here, what are the cases that I got ongoing with the bank? And you can go and say, okay, I have a new request. You fill it out and any questionnaire coming from the bank, you just drag and drop in here into the field. So what we do on our side is that we actually, um, let me just got this one. We structure the data in the, in the questionnaires. So you can see here, this is an, a questionnaire from a bank in Sweden. So immediately the platform can answer all of the questions where it already has the answer to. And this is, you know, okay, a company name, that's easy, right? That's not uh, deep tech to do that. But uh, also the other questions, who are your largest vendors, who are your largest customers, et cetera, et cetera. If there's a new question, platform will notify, you go in and answer it once, and then it's added to the data structure. You can sign this, we embedded DocuSign in the platform as well, so thereby really driving, trying to stay on the platform and share this with the banks, uh, the way, uh, or what they're actually asking for. So we're not trying to force them into standardization. I think, my time is more or less up. Uh, you can always come and see more. We are right over here. Uh, also to show you how we do the sharing with the banks uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of secure link sharing uh, and the other, I'm not gonna show you the collection part here. It's mainly, I think, responder for you guys. That's it. Questions, comments, frustrations, 